are flying insects closely related to wasps and ants known for their role in pollination and in the case of the best known bee species the western honey bee for producing honey and beeswax there are nearly 20,000 known species of bees in seven recognized biological families they are found on nearly every continent in every habitant on the planet that contains insect pollinated flowering plants in Uganda we have one species of bees and it is all over the country, almost all over East Africa. And when we talk of bees, they have categories, whereby we have the worker bees, those are the, fem the male bees, but sterile. Even if they lay eggs, all eggs develop into drones. And we have a queen, which is also a female bee. And it is always one and a hive. And we have what we call the drone bees. And those are a hundreds. And those three castes, each caste has its function or functions within a hive. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Well, bees are friendly. In this one acre here, you can put there around 500 beehives. It doesn't need a big land. Today on Seeds of Gold, we meet 54-year-old Francis Biencha, a beekeeper from Chimengo Sub-County, Masindi District. He has been involved in the apiculture business for most of his life. He now takes us through what it means to be a commercial beekeeper in Uganda. Beekeeping has become popular in the past and continues to be among the most trending agribusinesses. Areas in Uganda best known for this apiculture business are West Nile and Hoima. Kijunjuwa is an ideal place for bees. As you can see bushes uh, all, all over, so our place naturally uh, is good for that, for the bees. Uh, when we are young, we found that we are just beekeepers. We, are, we, we, we had a, uh, this, in fact, uh, most of them are one of the emi to go. Those are the local beehives. Our father, we are keeping bees, so we also came in. Only now, we have gone commercially. So when we go training, when we go training, that's why, that's when we went through this KTBH. But naturally, we had our to go, which we are doing well. Bees live in families called colonies and their homes are called hives. It is here that they serve their purpose, each according to their nature and sex. In a colony, there are worker bees, drones and queens. The first guest I talked to was the worker bees. There are thousands in the hive and they do a lot of activities within a hive. They collect nectar, they construct uh, the combs in the hive, they clean the hive, they regulate temperature, and they feed the queen, and they feed the brood. You see in the hive we have, we also have drones, those are male bees. For them they have all, almost only one function, to meet with the queen, but they don't meet with a queen within the same hive. If they happen to do so, they will be mating with the mother. Meaning that if it reaches time for mating, they move outside. There is what we call the congregation area. Where the queen bees moves out and waits for the male bees. Those are the drones. So when the drones moves out, they also go to that congregation area to get it the queen is to meet with. When keeping bees for commercial purposes, you need to consider the best hive that will shelter the strongest colonies for best honey results. Among the beehives used here in Uganda are the traditional beehive, the transitional beehive such as the Kenya Top Bar Beehive and the modern frame beehive. When we talk of beekeeping, there is no way how a person can say I'm keeping bees without beehives. 
So we have three categories of beehives, whereby we have the traditional beehives made from the locally available materials. So here there is no need of spending a lot of money buying materials. Eh? You collect what is available. For example, we have the reed hives. After making it, then you can smear it with cow dung. Then you make a top cover and site. That is the traditional. Then there is what we call the transitional, meaning that you move the, from the traditional at least to the next level of an improved one. An example is the Kenya top bar hive. This one, it is somehow expensive and it is made from pieces of timber. And it has different components or parts. It has a top cover. Then there is what we call, the to this is the top bars I'm talking of. When bees enter here, they start constructing combs on each, you know, on each top bar. Meaning that if you have 27 top bars here, then you will have 27 combs. And the production of KTB, if, if you harvest this type of hive here, you can get like 15 to 20 kilograms. And yet from a local one, or from a traditional one, you can get between 5 to 10. So this is at least an improved one. Then there is what we call the modern frame hive. This one here. So this one has several components, whereby we have the flower board, the brood chamber, the queen excluder, the honey chamber, here there is the inner cover and the top cover. And this queen excluder here, its work is to confine a queen in the brood chamber. Meaning that a queen cannot move from the brood to the honey chamber. So when you are harvesting, you only harvest honey from the honey chamber. You can keep on adding more honey chamber. So with this one, you can harvest between 20 to 30 kilograms of comb de honey. So these are the three types of beehives. To those that have for a long time worked with bees, like Mosei Francis Biencha, they have only kind words for bees. He says by nature, bees are very friendly creatures until you disrespect their peace and space. Bees need to be loved and cared for, just like any other creature. Well, bees are friendly. Only that we don't know that we are, we are friendly. They are, they are friendly. Uh, that's why for those with big houses, they come, in your, they come in, in your cupboard, they stay there, they don't sting you. One, you must love them. And for us, as we are going to school, uh, when we could get uh, bees, bees there, uh, we harvest. So we are not fearing the bees right from the beginning. So we loved them, we are not fearing them. Uh, that's why, uh, even now, we are just friendly to them. Well, this is only an acre, but it has around 40, they are, around, they are just around 40, less than an acre. But you can, uh, if I were to do it just intensively, I could make a stand, uh, on that stand I put there six, on the other stand put six, just in this one acre here, you can put there around 500 beehives, it doesn't need a big land. And the best thing of, of, on bees is, in fact, we term it to be a lazy man's work. Once you put there your colonies and they colonize, you only go for inspection, you only go for just slashing, just visiting them. Nothing else you put in, apart from them giving you what you want. When there's a necessity of water, especially when they are putting, uh, when they are approaching a dry season, 
for that at that, at that time they need water so what i do uh, i have containers put there bring water for them to to ease them i can put the, the, the sticks for them to land on so, th so that they they don't uh, the, they don't die in the water but other things they do them just by themselves Harvesting honey from bees is normally done in two seasons every year and to do this task extra caution must be taken as bees are considered to be highly protective of this product as it is food for their young ones. Yes, we have two seasons for harvesting. Uh, one is mainly April, May and June and that is, and that is the main one and in September, August, September there this is the second one, but that one is minor. And in most cases, we, 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 won't, uh, we, even, we don't even uh, have it on that. We just leave it for the, for the, busy, for the young ones. Because by that time, there are very few flowers uh, for them to, to collect the what? Uh, the nectar and their necessities. Uh, when harvesting, as we have said in them, uh, you see that uh, uh, this beehive needs to, to, to be harvested. One, you see, you see those beehives coming out. Now coming out means they, they are protecting the honey behind there. The bees, the bees just come just uh, at their entrance to see who is coming to steal what to, to, uh, to steal their honey. So for that, for us as beekeepers, we know now there is what they are protecting honey there. So it is right. Uh, for at that time, it is when we. Uh, we begin of what the the harvesting season. As we know that there are three bees, there are three types of bees just in our colony. A queen just is for laying eggs. A drone is just as a male. And the workers. So for the workers, for the younger ones, as you know, younger people how well, they are, they are hostile. They are. Uh, so for them, they stay in the, in the beehive to protect. So the other old, old, uh, the, the old ones are the ones which go for what to collect, uh, to collect the, the uh, for, for the what for the to look for the food for the what. But the younger ones are the one which, which does the protecting. When preparing to harvest honey and other bee products, certain precautions must be taken. These involve fully protecting your body from bee stings with a special harvesting gear and also it is advisable to harvest in the late evening hours to protect the nearby homes and communities from the dangerous bees. When entering the apiary, you must be protected because bees are aggressive. They don't know what, uh, but uh, once disturbed, then there's nothing apart from fighting. So you must be protected by putting on these harvesting gears. They are good that they protect you. They are protective because the whole of your body is protected, is covered. This one is called a veil. Just protect you from up on the head. You must have gloves just in your hands. When harvesting, you have other equipment you must have. You must have a bucket. Uh, only that we are not going to harvest because we just we are just nearby we are by the road. Uh, we can intervene with other people when we when we disturb them. So you must have a bucket. You must have uh, a panga to cut the combs. You must have a brush uh, to, to, brush off, to brush off the what? The, 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 the bees. 
which will, which will have come on the what? On the comb. So now here you are ready to enter the apiary. When entering the apiary, it is still advisable that you follow through a safe path and with less noise so as not to distract the bees since at this time the workers are on a lot watching out for the honey. This is the apiary. You can see them entering in. You, you can come. So this type of beehive is called uh, KTBH, Kenya Top Bar Beehive. It has a cover. This is the cover. First of all, remove the cover so it has the top bars. These are the bars. Or if you had, if we had opened the one which, which has bees, you'd see just combs here. As you remove this cover here, this top, this top bar, it comes with a comb just around here. That's why you come with the brush. So when, uh, when, you, you, when you, you, you pull it up, uh, you see either it is ready. If it is ready, you brush off, you brush off the bees. Just in there again. So when it is ready, you cut it and put it in a, an air-tied bucket. So after that, you remove another one until you finish off uh, what you want. When harvesting, uh, this is the ent the entrance is this way. The entrance. This is the entrance. So bees enter from here. Bees enter from here. So when they enter there, they start uh, making their comb just on these first ones. On this on this first part here, we call it a brooder, whereby for them. When they begin off, they start laying the queen, layers the, lays the eggs in the what? In, the, in those combs. So when harvesting, uh, you should start from behind because this is the honey chamber. The other one is a brooder for the brood and uh, there is a what? A honey chamber on this side. So when harvesting, you begin off with the, with the honey chamber, it's where our honey is. So when you harvest, you shouldn't finish off all the honey because that honey is not, was not made for you, it was made for their children, for, the, for their young ones. So when you get enough, almost reaching the brood, you should stop leaving some for, the, for their young ones. So if, if you finish off all, that's why you see them absconding because there will be hunger just in the, for their children, they will go somewhere else where they can get uh, food for their young ones. When the colony is strong, you can get at least a 10 liter, uh, 8 to 10 liter jerrycan. What do you mean by the colony? Uh, a colony, uh, those, are, those are the bees. Uh, just uh, those are the bees in the what the bees in the, in the in the beehive, so that is the colony. So when the colony is is, is strong, uh, they will do they, they will give you much honey because they are strong and they are many. The more they are, the more work they do for you. Only this year the harvest harvest haven't been good, but I normally harvest 25 to 30 jerrycans in a season, 30 there. But this year it has been only 10 because the season hasn't been good for us. Well, weather changes. Uh, the sun, uh, sun came, came early, that it was in November. So they disrupted even them. As it, it disrupted other things, also they were also inclusive. So there was, no, there was just little honey for 
uh, for this season because of that weather change. Yeah. Apart from being considered one of the most dangerous insects to be kept around, next week we we'll look at the other challenges there are to be keeping. Plus, where is the market and how worth is this venture?